We have three scripture readings today. The first is from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 through 13. Then on that day, David first appointed the singing of praises to the Lord by Asaph and his kindred. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of his servant Israel, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The next reading is from Colossians chapter 4, uh, verses 2 through 6. Devote yourself to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us as well that God will open to us a door for the word, that we may declare the mystery of Christ for which I am in prison, so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourself wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. And finally, from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 19. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the Lord of our, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know that what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. So ends the reading. May God bless all who hear it. Oh. It's Lent, again. I hear you asking, it's the same question I have, hasn't it been Lent this whole time? Hasn't it been Lent for two years? When is it finally going to be Easter? I hear you. It's a little difficult these days not to greet this season with some measure of, what is that word, PTSD. You know, it was, in the middle of Lent that, uh, or towards the beginning of it actually, that the pandemic started two years ago. It was in Lent last year when we realized the effects of that pandemic and the increase in health and income and racial inequality and the ongoing division in our country over vaccines of all things. And now in Lent of 2022, we are witnessing the invasion of Ukraine. These past couple of years have been full of just so much of everything, of trials and of the unexpected blessings that have come with them. How can we possibly enter into another season of reflection and complicate, contemplation, complication, that's very funny, <laughs> when we really just want it to be Easter already? As I mentioned at last week's Ash Wednesday service, I've recently been reminded that, oddly enough, Lent may actually be the perfect season for such a time as this. For Lent is a time of both fasting and feasting. Usually we only think about the fasting part, right? What are you going to give up for Lent? I know what you're going to give up for Lent. It's the same thing you give up every year. And some people give up the same thing every year. Some people vary it something different every year. We give up chocolate or social media or yelling at our family members. We give up caffeine or alcohol or something else that we like. All of that, hopefully, in the effort to remove some of the barriers between us and God, the things that keep us distracted or overwhelmed or otherwise unable to connect with all that is holy. But the thing we often forget to emphasize is that Lent is meant for feasting as well as for fasting. It's just that we're meant to be feasting on things we don't always pay attention to. We're not 
meant to starve ourselves, but to feast on that which feeds us spiritually, to let go of the things that separate us and take on the ones that bring connection to ourselves and to each other and to God, to, as I put it on Ash Wednesday, gorge ourselves on prayer, to just do as much of that as we can. Lent is a season when we are sometimes more likely to pay attention to our spiritual lives than at other times of the year. So it's a good time to practice some of the spiritual disciplines that could turn out to be meaningful in the rest of the year. It's a time to refresh our prayer life. Like anything else that we do every day, it's easy for our prayers to get a little bit stale or rote, right? I mean, do you really think intentionally about how you brush your teeth every day? I don't, I just do it, right? Sometimes we get to that place with our prayers as well. But if we change things up a little bit, we might add what the scripture writer says is seasoning to our prayer lives. Wake them up a little bit. Do you remember a few years ago when the deacons decided to use alternate forms of the Lord's Prayer? A question had come up about the word trespasses and how we felt about that. And in, in the way of the deacons, a lot of time you bring a simple question and you end up with a much larger conversation in six different directions and a solution that nobody saw coming. So what we decided to do was to spend a season practicing different versions of the Lord's Prayer, alternate versions. And I gotta tell you, that's a really fun part of my job today. I'm gonna go and look for alternate versions of the Lord's Prayer. At the end of the experiment, everybody decided they really liked it, even the people who'd been super skeptical before we started. There was something in the saying of new words for an old prayer that helped us to understand the meaning differently than we usually did, to pay more attention to it. And even when we went back to the traditional language, to hear that in a new way to see that and experience that in a new way, more deeply than we had before. We're gonna do something kind of like that this Lent. We're gonna feast on different practices of prayer, a prayer smorgasbord. Each Sunday, I'm gonna teach and lead a different prayer practice during the sermon time. And a few of them will be about sitting still to talk to God, but most of them will be interactive in some kind of way, something to make prayer tangible in a different way. Methods that may be appreciated by the more visual and kinesthetic learners among us. Maybe some of these will speak to your soul, maybe some of them won't, but perhaps we'll all find new ways that we can carry with us into Easter and Pentecost in the rest of the year. Ways to make prayer more accessible and more useful and more real. Today, as you came into the sanctuary, you were given a choice of a prayer token, a stone or a small cross or a circle of beads, kind of like this. Does everybody have one? If you don't, feel free to go back and get one out of the basket in the narthex. Over the years, we've talked about prayer stones and hand crosses, something to carry in our pockets every day to remind us to pray. These give us a physical touchstone so that even when we don't have words to put to our prayers. We can hold it and rub it and feel it in our hands and know that God is hearing what it is that's in our heart. Stones, of course, are as old as the earth, a little piece of creation we can carry in our pocket. Crosses are particularly apt for the season of Lent. They remind us of Simon of Cyrene, who was compelled to carry the cross for Christ. So we might carry a little bit of Jesus and his journey with us. Both the stones and the crosses help us focus our minds on prayer in a different way. Have you ever been with a little kid in a fancy store? And the very first words you say as you cross the threshold are, look with your eyes, not with your hands. But sometimes we need to look with our hands. We need to look with our fingers. 
We need to feel something tangible, like there's a prayer in our pocket all the time. The prayer stones and the crosses help us hold our prayers in the palm of our hands, which moves them out of our hearts and that much closer to handing over to God. Those we've talked about before, those we've done in Lent, but we haven't ever really talked about prayer beads. In his book, Praying With Our Hands, author John Sweeney reminds us that it's an ancient practice to use chains of beads or knots to count or track our prayers. Sweeney traces the practice back to a fourth century Christian monk, Paul the Hermit, who used pebbles to help him focus and keep track of the 300 prayers he said each day. Sweeney also notices that the early followers of Muhammad created strings of beads so that they could pray the name of Allah. Hindus and Buddhists use strands of beads for their prayer, and Orthodox Christians have used and still use strings of knots, one for each prayer. And of course, Catholics have the rosary. By most accounts, Protestants really didn't get on this particular bandwagon until about the 1980s through the Anglicans. But it's obviously a practice that's well grounded in all kinds of prayer around the world. As our hands make their way around the strand, Sweeney says, we and our prayers are woven into the fabric of the divine. To get started with prayer beads, we might use a string of beads that we find to purchase. The strands I have found and given out to you have pretty much the same size and shape of bead on each individual strand, but the different strands vary from each other. Some of them have many more beads, and this one has much less. So each one is a little bit unique, which seems perfect for us, really. How very WHCC and UCC. But if you'd rather, you can always make your own strand of prayer beads with beads all the same size and shape or interspersing a larger one among the smaller ones to represent a particular prayer placed at intervals among the others. You can put a cross or some other kind of charm at the start of the loop or just keep it to a simple circle of beads. You can find prayers that others use or write your own to fit your life and your intentions. However we use them, Prayer beads are a simple way to keep us grounded and present with ourselves as we pray. So let's try it. If you have a strand of beads, you can follow along with me, moving to a new bead with each line of the prayer. Don't worry if you have more beads or, or fewer than I do, just keep moving from one to another. If you have a single stone or a cross or a token of some kind in your hand, you might decide to just turn it a little bit with each new line of prayer. So it feels a little different in your hand with each line. There are, of course, really complicated versions of bead prayers, but I thought I'd start us with something kind of simple. This is an adaptation of the Come Lord Jesus prayer. My strand has 16 beads on it, so I've divided them into four sections and put a little cross at the very beginning and a dot here and here and here to kind of make the symbol of a cross. So we'll begin with an opening line of the prayer before we even start with the beads. And then each dotted or crossed prayer, quarter of the way through, has its own prayer to say, has its own line of prayer. And then the other three in between have a different line. They have all the same one, but it's different from the first one. Now you're totally confused, right? Okay, so there's an opening sentence and then think of this as prayer A, B, 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 A, B, 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 right? All the way around. And then there's a closing line at the end. Feel free to join in speaking the prayers. It's pretty simple as you learn them. Are you ready? Let's do this. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, 
draw us to yourself. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself. Come, Lord Jesus. Draw us to yourself. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. I don't know if this will work for you or not, but why not try? Let's make Lent a season of delighting in ways of communicating with God in ways of connecting with each other, not as solemn as it might be, but some period of joy. Devoting ourselves, as Colossians 4 says, to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. May it be so now in Lent and always. Amen. <laughs>